Tonight on To The Point, an encampment evicted. They gave us one day notice. They've had more than three days. Private landowners making it happen. What happens next? Fairfield has a peacock problem. How much it's now costing taxpayers to remove them. And did your cell phone service go out today? What we can verify about the outage. And later in the show, fears of harassment and threats have local election offices on high alert. You see registrars that are very concerned. What one local election office is doing to keep you and its workers safe. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alex Bell and this is To The Point. We start tonight with an update on a growing homeless encampment on a privately owned piece of land out in North Sacramento. For weeks we've reported that neighbors have been fed up and people living on the land say it's a struggle to find resources and housing. Now today those living on what's become known as Ripley Field have to find somewhere else to go and they were actually evicted this morning. Our Jeannie Nguyen was there during the process hearing from neighbors, landowners and the unhoused. Alex, there are a lot of mixed emotions with today's sweep. Now, earlier this morning, there were a lot more cars, people, pets, and debris scattered across this area. And behind me here, you could see it has been cleaned up a lot more. And neighbors and this land owner say that they've wanted this plot cleaned up for a while. Tonight, we're asking the city where our people that called this area home are supposed to go. We're moving out. That's what the, the owner wants us to do. For four months, Tina Bangler has lived on this privately owned piece of land in North Sacramento. It's been a rough journey getting to this point. To be honest, uh, drugs and not paying attention to what I should have been taking care of. While being evicted today is difficult, it's also been a frustrating journey for Gregory Poliak, one of three owners of this piece of land. We're doing a cleanup here for the second time in the last two and a half years. We've literally done it once. We've kept the grass down, we kept property clean. We have a fence around the property. However, people break the fence. People move on the property and we cannot keep them out. The land's owners say they have plans to start developing the land into 17 parcels to build homes. We're small individual owners trying to build, trying to develop the land to make the community better. The neighborhood is falling apart and this is one of the problems. There's a house for sale right across the street and they're selling because of this. Even though Bangler understands she shouldn't be on private property, she says today's eviction came as a bit of a surprise. They gave us one day notice. One day. They came yesterday, told everybody, there. I'm glad I came home yesterday because I wasn't going to come home for a couple of days. I would came home to nothing. But Poliak says they've been working with the city to make today's cleanup happen and believes there was plenty of notice. They've had more than three days. Sacramento police and the city's incident management team also showed up at today's eviction. The city of Sacramento tells ABC 10 people were offered places to stay at the Roseville Road campus and the Outreach and Engagement Center. As people were told to leave, Please keep your knife away from us. I don't know what you're going to do. Our camera caught a tense moment with Poliak and a man on the property. Poliak says moving forward, they will be putting an RV placed inside the property for someone to keep an eye on it at all times. As for Bangler, she's hoping for the best. I, for a little while, probably be still in my shirt, um, but somewhere else. Um, but I'm trying to get into a program. None of the homeowners wanted to speak with us on camera today, but they did tell us off camera they are thankful for today's sweep. However, they are not hopeful it will stay this way. Alex. And as we've mentioned, we have been covering this story for weeks, sharing multiple sides of the issue. We have more on our website, abc10.com slash to the point. Tonight, two children are dead after falling into a river near the Shasta Dam. The Shasta County Sheriff's Office says part of the hillside collapsed, causing them to fall into the river. They say the kids were out in Corm Ranch camping area for the Redding Dirt Rider Endurance Race this weekend. Right now, a Modesto family is in mourning after their mother and grandmother died in a fire. Family members say that 76-year-old Gail Dodd was found inside her home on Celeste Drive on Tuesday. The retired caregiver and avid bowler died at the hospital after the fire. Gail's adult children say they'll miss their mom, her daily calls, and her warm personality. I know how lucky I am to have had a mother like her who called me every day to tell me she loved me every morning. She called me every afternoon. She, we talked every night to say good night. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. 
and firefighters, um, they still don't know what caused the blaze. Family members tell us that they plan to memorialize her with her favorite treat by holding a milkshake social. Tonight, the city of Fairfield is preparing to pay more than $20,000 to remove peacocks. As our Roxanne Elias explains, the birds have taken a toll on the neighbors. The sound of peacocks roaming freely around the Roaming Hills area is hard to miss in this Fairfield neighborhood. Anytime you see some uh, beautiful birds in nature, it adds more beauty to the neighborhood. Fairfield Mayor Catherine Moy says the birds were left behind about two decades ago. The city of Fairfield um, inherited some land from a woman who gave it to us. It was an old ranch. What came with that were some peafowl, peacocks and peahens. I believe there were fewer than 10. What started out as a small flock has turned into about 115 peacocks. They're beloved by many, including this couple visiting from Vacaville to catch a glimpse. The thing that really kind of <laughs> shocked me was there weren't any like boundaries mm -hmm. for them. They're just kind of out here and about living. But Moy says they're considered evil by a group of people who no longer want them here. Complaints include birds poking holes in people's roofs, pecking dents in people's cars, and destroying a freshly poured driveway. And after two neighborhood meetings, the peacocks must go. We will have 50 birds at the most. That's it, 50 birds. And the rest of them will be trapped humanely and then rehomed at ranches and farms around. The cost to remove the peacocks? $400 per bird times 65 birds that are being removed. That's around $26,000 footed by taxpayers. The city has hired Raptor Events to relocate the birds. The birds are safely caught in very large cages. Uh, each cage is 10 by 10 feet. We always do same day pickup. Residents understand why some may want the colorful birds gone, but they say it's a shame it has come to this. Yeah, there's a, there it goes now. Saying it wants to stay here. <laughs> All right, the Fairfield City Council approved the plan to remove the birds this week. They expect the 65 birds will be removed by the end of March. All right, coming up on To The Point, AT&T customers without phone service this morning. What we can verify about the outage. Sunshine and dry conditions into the weekend. How long? That's expected to last. And later, security ahead of the election. The steps one local office is taking to make sure your vote and workers stay safe. We're having conversations at a statewide level. What can we do to keep the offices and all of our staff and the poll workers as safe as possible during this climate? Welcome back. Check out this new video from Santa Paula, California. It shows more of the aftermath from the storms earlier this week. You can see there is a mudslide coming down a hill as crews work to stop the damage from reaching nearby homes. And Carly, we know we've had some strong storms the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Are we at least clearing out for the weekend? Do we have any good news ahead? <laughs> we do have good news. Okay. We are clearing out and we will start seeing some more sunshine as well as a mix of sun and clouds. So some clouds pushing in and out, but that should make for some beautiful photos down there. Quiet dry through the weekend with areas of morning patchy fog. So especially tomorrow morning, we are looking at developing fog, especially for the San Joaquin Valley spots. And that could be limited down to even a half mile in visibility. Please be safe out there. Now, we will start to see some of that lifting by the mid-morning hours with shower chances returning Monday. So you have the weekend. We're looking at mostly clear skies now and taking a look at some of that visibility dropping down to less than a mile for Stockton, Manteca. And some of those rural spots could start to see that low as low as half a mile, three to five miles in visibility from Rio Vista to Sacramento, clearing by the mid-morning hours. Lunchtime, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds. A little bit of a flare-up Friday afternoon as we'll start to see uh, some winds picking up in the coastal range. Otherwise, calm to light winds in the valley. And then taking a look at our future cast radar, rain expected to arrive early on Monday morning, and we'll see some snowfall as well, with some snow showers pushing through Monday and pretty much passes through. And we'll see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday looking pretty decent with sunshine. By next weekend, that's when we look at our best shot to see more shower chances as well as snow shower chances moving in. Looking at our highs for tomorrow, we'll see those mid 60s to low 60s out there in the foothills with 48 in Truckee, 45 in South Lake Tahoe. The Bay Area looking at those temperatures right around those mid 60s and the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley spots also mid 60s 
with overnight lows there in the upper 30s and low 40s, so not that cold. But hey, we're looking at a bit of a cool down. Temperatures could get as high as the upper 60s, low 70s on Saturday with sunshine. Then we'll be evening out in those mid to upper 50s next week. All right, next on to the point. Did you wake up without cell phone service? We verify what happened. Plus, President Biden proposing tighter restrictions at the border. Why some say it's too much. And local election offices on high alert. How they are working to make sure your vote and their staff stay safe. Probably saw the headlines today or experienced it yourself. Thousands of AT&T customers woke up without service, but there's been a lot of confusion spreading about what exactly caused it and who was affected. Here's what we can verify. First, lots of people online claimed that the outage affected all three major nationwide mobile carriers, but that's false. The outage only affected AT&T customers. The company said they pinpointed a disruption in service and added that AT&T customers could still make calls using Wi-Fi during the outage. T-Mobile and Verizon confirmed their service was fine. Some of the issues reported by people on their networks were likely because they were trying to contact AT&T customers. Next, some AT&T customers may have seen an SOS status at the top of their phone. This ex-user claimed that that message prevents someone from making any calls, even to 911. But that's also false. According to Apple, an SOS message in your status means your phone isn't connected to a cellular network, but they say that won't stop you from being able to make emergency calls. And finally, another tweet said that the outage could be related to solar flares that occurred last night. But again, that's false. According to NASA, there were two major solar flares around midnight last night. The space agency says solar flares are powerful bursts of energy that can impact the high frequencies used to power radio communications and electric power grids, among other things. But cell phones work on a different type of frequency, which was not impacted by the flare. According to Charlotte-based meteorologist Brad Panovich and astrophysicist Dr. Ryan French with the British National Solar Observatory. And AT&T released a statement just moments ago saying they believe today's outage was caused by incorrect execution of a process used while expanding their network. New developments at the southern border. President Biden's administration says he might take executive action to make it harder to seek asylum and might ban migrants from seeking asylum if they cross into the U.S. illegally between U.S. ports of entry. The new action, if taken by the president, could put him at odds with his own party. Some Democrats compare such a crackdown to Trump-era policies, but critics say the influx of migrants poses a national security risk. No final decision has been made yet, though. Tonight in Your Voice, Your Vote, local election offices are on high alert. There are fears of harassment and threats, and right now offices are even supplying workers with Narcan after suspicious letters were mailed to offices. So tonight, we're introducing you to the Yolo County Registrar of Voters, who says that his staff safety is his number one goal. Hillary needs you. I'm proud of the campaign that Senator Sanders and I are running. Our country is being run horribly. It was May of 2016. It was right before the first primary election of a, a very contested election. Jesse Salinas became the registrar of voters for the Yolo County Elections Office in 2016. It was quite a, a baptism through fire, so to speak. <laughs> it was the year former President Donald Trump's MAGA movement spread across the country. The election is being rigged by corrupt media. Fake news. Fake news, folks, fake news. Became a household word. False allegations and outright lies. Four years later, former President Trump falsely claimed the 2020 election was stolen. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! Conspiracy theories about voting machines spread. You're not gonna be able to know the end of this election, in my opinion, for weeks, months, Maybe never. It's very concerning for all of us in the elections world. The unfounded claims escalated to tense standoffs like the one at the Maricopa County Elections Office in Arizona. The last thing you want is for anybody to have harm done to them by just doing their job, and that's really critical for us. Have you ever been threatened or harassed while doing your job? There's been times where you feel uncomfortable because people are very passionate, I'll just put it that way, about their views. and so. Um, I've had individuals that have uh, threatened to throw me into jail, folks that have been pretty aggressive in terms of their comments towards uh, either myself or even family members. So it's unfortunate, but at the same time, you just have to focus on the task at hand and be positive with people and know that we're here for a greater good, our democracy. 
In 2021, the Department of Justice created the Threats Against Election Workers Task Force in response to the significant increase in the threat of violence against election offices. In the first year alone, they've reviewed more than a thousand contacts that allegedly harassed election workers. So far, the task force has prosecuted 13 federal cases, majority of them ending in guilty pleas or sentencings. Jesse says all of California's election offices are watching what happens closely. We're on high alert, and that's true across the state. You see registrars that are very concerned. We're having conversations at a statewide level. What can we do to keep the offices and all of our staff and the poll workers as safe as possible during this climate? So we're actually going to have it more enclosed. This is what the Yolo County Elections Office looks like right now. There is a swinging door that will soon be replaced with a key card door. Only those with a badge can get in. Plexiglass is being added, and this election space is equipped with emergency buttons with law enforcement on speed dial. We've already been in contact with our uh, local sheriff, so we are already in discussions with them and making plans for March. In recent news headlines, suspicious envelopes were sent to election offices in five states, some containing fentanyl. Local election offices have plans if that were to happen here. So you guys are actually carrying Narcan for your employees, right? Right, yes, we are. We're not only the Narcan dispensers, but also we have trainings that we provided for all staff. They, they've been trained on how to use it properly. While two letters addressed to election offices in Los Angeles and Sacramento were intercepted by the Postal Service, workers are still on edge. How does that make you feel knowing that already those election offices are receiving letters like that? Well, it's very concerning because you have people that are trying to do their job and, and to know that their lives are put under threat of somebody who's a bad actor. Because we're here to run a, an amazing election that's secure and safe, and we will do that. We will be successful regardless of what people try to do. We'll make sure we're, we're protecting our staff and providing that for our voters. Jesse says security also hinges on being transparent about the voting process. We really strive on making sure that people can see the process. We encourage them to come see it firsthand. Yolo County officials are funding additional viewing space in the elections office so people can see how ballots are scanned and counted. I know here in Yolo County, we have a lot of support locally uh, among the community for what we do. So these are called electronic poll books. After spending time at the Yolo County elections office, one thought became clear. The heart of their work and why they choose to stay has stayed the same. I love my job. I feel very honored and privileged to be doing this job. I think in the United States as we run our democracy well. And I think that piece of it is so true and people have to have confidence and they need to rely on those of us that put our whole life and all of what we believe in into these type of elections that are so important to all of us. Every election is important. We want to make sure people understand we care and we're doing everything possible to make a positive difference. And the Yolo County Election Office told us they are always on the lookout for misinformation on social media. So if you see something you might have a question about, they encourage voters to reach out directly to their office because, as they say, they are the real source of verified and trusted information. And I want to get some more context on our story tonight. A study done by Brennan Center for Justice among local election officials across the country found 30 percent of people say they have personally been abused, harassed or threatened because of their job. More than one in nine are concerned about facing pressure to certify certain results in favor of a specific candidate or party. And 74% say their annual budget needs to grow when thinking about election security and administration needs over the next five years. And if you want to read more about this study and our story, you can always do that at abc10.com slash elections. Coming up on To The Point, the local museum helping change lives through art education. Every February, we recognize Black History Month, and this year's theme is African Americans and the Arts. And what better way to celebrate than at the Sojourner Truth African Heritage Museum out in South Sacramento? So Shauna McDaniels founded the museum actually back in 1996 to change lives through art education. The museum explores the Black experience from past to present, and the walls are covered with African American art, like paintings, photography, quilts, and a lot more. McDaniels says her hope is for Black art to be more visible in public spaces too. Being able to celebrate uh, black artists is just an amazing thing. 
and is long overdue. Coming up at 6.30, on to the point, our race and culture reporter Candace Red will share how the museum is creating a space for black artists for all ages to thrive. And you already know, we love getting to know you. We love telling your stories and getting to meet you. So if you have something that you think we should be looking into, make sure you reach out to me and the team. Remember, strangers are people we just haven't gotten to know yet. Take some time to get to know someone. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. The To The Point team and I love hearing from you, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at tothepoint at abc10.com, or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.